Well, hello, all you classy Bible scholars out there. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about you. A scholar is someone who studies. And if you're studying the Bible, you're a Bible scholar. So, well, well done. Anyways, today is day 51, February the 20th. The one-year Bible sections of Scripture, we've got Leviticus chapter 9, verse 7, through chapter 10, verse 20. Mark chapter 4, verse 26, through chapter 5, verse 20. Psalm chapter 37, verse 30 through 40. And Proverbs chapter 10, 6 and 7. You get two Proverbs today. That makes you twice as smart if you do it. So today I want to look at Psalm 37, 37. Just one verse. Uh, let's see here. Psalm 37 and all the way down here to 37. It says this. It says, mark, mark the blameless and behold the upright. For there is a future for the man of peace. I really like that. Mark the blameless and behold the upright. For there is a future for the man of peace. Behold, it's almost like someone who's, who's sacred and set apart. Just something to think about. So the blameless, the blameless. Well, you know what? I don't know a single one of us that's blameless. But through Jesus Christ, he took the blame for all of us on the cross so that through him we could live as if we're innocent. All, all, all the sins and mess-ups and oopsies, yeah, do we still have to reap the consequences of those? Yeah. Yeah, because he's a just God. But he's also a loving and forgiving God. And so he removes the eternal consequences from that sin. It, it's just amazing. So, so at any rate, when we live to be blameless and upright, when we live to be underneath Jesus Christ's blood and forgiveness, and, and li actually live in that, live an upright, proper, correct life, we will be noticed. Mark the blameless and behold, notice them, look at them, they're set apart. You see, we will be noticed. See, there is a future for the men of peace as well. So, peace officers, you're a person of peace. I hope. <laughs> I really hope. Uh, medics, dispatch, firemen, businessmen, teachers, whatever it is you're doing, if you're not in it and striving towards peace, you might need to check some things. Frankly, even the military, their end goal is peace. It's just a long, hard fight to get there. There's a future for men of peace. We need to be sure our end goals stay bringing peace, not wrath. I think it's real easy for us to get caught up on, well, so-and-so did wrong. We're just, man, you know what, they need this and this and all the judgment and coals to be heaped on their head. And we end up missing the peace part. The end goal is not the punishment. The end goal is not the arrest or the tasing or the pepper spray or the citation or the any of that. The sentence. The goal is peace. And if that goal is the goal you have in mind, it changes how you do all the other things you do. Might those other things be necessary? Yeah, sometimes you have to fight like mad for peace. But you fight different. Because your heart's protected. And you, you've got it guarded against bitterness and unforgiveness and, and all these ugly, awful things that can come and just take us over and begin eating away at us. Be sure our end goals stay bringing peace, not wrath. The temporary outcome may be the same. One way or the other, this, this person, they're, they're in jail. They're, they've got the citation. They've, they've got the, the court sentence. They've got the, the verbal reprimand, the, the business write-up, the whatever. 
The end goal might be the same, but one of them, one method, preserves your heart and protects you so that you can continue to be classy, set apart and holy. Take care of yourselves.